Welcome back once again to Opposite Channel. So, in today's video, we continue our discussion on forecasting in business. So, we continue by looking at what is a forecasting error. So, in our two previous lessons, we discussed what is forecasting, we look at ways of making forecasting organization, and then there's a latter part of forecasting. So, we want to look at how to determine a forecast error. So, what is a forecast error? Forecast error in simple term has to do with the difference between the actual value and the forecast value. So we have what FE to mean the forecast error, which is equal to what the actual value minus the forecast what value. This is how we determine a forecast what error. But as always, the benchmark for your prediction to be 100% exact is that we expect your forecast error to be what, zero. That is the base rule. That is the benchmark but not always the case so once you are saying that your forecast error is actually your actual value minus forecast value, and that's leading you to what zero doesn't mean that actually your forecast is actually what's right or perfect there are instances where you may have let's say a negative value and then a positive value that will make everything equate to zero that doesn't mean that your prediction is actually what correct and going forward, you get to understand or know what we call a bias in forecasting. And I will explain that as we move along in that line. So in this particular video, we will look at what three ways of computing for forecast error, right? So that's what we're going to do in this video. And these are one, the mean absolute word deviation, two, the mean square error, and then lastly the main absolute percentage error so these are the three things we're going to look at in determining forecast error in this particular video so let's take note of that so under the main absolute deviation as i said earlier the benchmark for every forecast error is expected to be what having a forecast error to be zero that is the ideal rule or that is the ideal rule uh, base for us to know the accuracy of our forecasting in business organization so under the mean absolute deviation it takes into account finding what the mean of the absolute values of the errors right to determine what the forecast error and let's say we have this data to actually explain the mean absolute deviation much more better let's say we have this data which comprises of what week and then their demand and let's say the forecast so I use W and D and F to represent the initials for this word, week demand and then forecast. So let's say we have week one, week two, week three, week four, and let's say the demand for week one is like say 110, and week two is like say 150, week three is like say 170, and let's say week four is what, 130. And let's say that of what, the forecast value is what, for week one is 115, for week two is 140, Okay, for week three is like say 165 and for week four, 136. So under the mean absolute deviation, you must first of all find what your error or your deviation. So we have a column called error or deviation, all right? So by error or deviation, this is what we mean. For us to get a positive deviation, we expect that our forecast value should be less than the actual value. But for us to get what a negative what error or a negative deviation you expect that our forecast value should be greater than the actual what value so let's take note of that here i was analyzing from the forecast value but if i'm taking it from the actual value if it's a positive value then let the actual value be greater than the forecast what value if it is a negative value then let the actual value be lesser than the forecast what value that becomes the error or the deviation in terms of negative and positive right so now here we have the demand to be 110, we have the forecast of what? 115. We forecast or we plan to make the sale of what? 115, but then we're able to achieve what? 110. And that is a negative deviation, so you have what? Negative 5. Then 150 as the actual sale, and then the 140 was a planned what? Sale. And what are we getting? It's a positive what? Deviation or positive error, and that should fetch us 10. Then we have 165 as a planned what? Sale. And we have 170 as the actual seal. So what is the difference? There's a positive one. So that results to what? 5. And then we have 130 as the actual seal. And then 136 as the planned seal. 
and this should result what a negative what six as a negative error right so once you're able to find the error the next is to find the absolute of the error so we have what absolute values of what the error so by absolute you have two bars as a vertical bar placed on the values right so you have the value inside so when you find the absolute value of a negative deviation you get a positive when you find the absolute value of a positive word number or a positive deviation you can still get a positive so let's take note of that so the absolute value of a negative 5 will fetch us what a positive 5 the absolute value of 10 will fetch us 10 the absolute value of 5 as positive value still get a positive 5 and the absolute value of negative 6 will fetch us positive 6 so once we are done this formula will say that we should sum up what the summation or we should sum up the the, the absolute values of what the deviation or the error term, right? And what are we getting? When we sum them up, you should be able to get 26. So therefore, your mean absolute deviation per formula should be equal to the summation of what the absolute values of the deviation divided by n. So what are we getting? What was our absolute what deviation? And that was what 26 in terms of sum, and the number is what four. So we have one, two, three, four, and we are getting four in that line. When you divide, you expect to get what an error term of what 6.5. So generally, for the perfection and the accuracy of your forecasting, we expect a forecast error to what zero. But the smaller your forecast error, the more desirable your information will rely on to make what future prediction for the various or the upcoming what periods that you want to engage in. So, for example, pep as part of the performance measure within the organization, right? But the larger your forecast error, the more it becomes less desirable for us to use such information to forecast for the coming period. So let's take note of that. This is actually the main absolute deviation as a way of forecasting or determined forecast accuracy, right? By revealing the error in that regard. So let's take note of that. So once we're able to know how to calculate what the mean absolute deviation, we can then take the discussion whether to look at the mean square error. And here too, we find the error or the deviation, we square it and we find the mean. Very simple. So we use the same information you use here to actually uh, compute for that. So we have our week, we have our week, we have our demand being representing the actual, and we have our forecast, we present the forecast value. So we have one, two, three, and four, and we have the demand to be what, one, one, zero. We have here, what was the second, 150, and we have 170, and lastly, we have what, 130, for the actual demand for week four. And then when it comes to forecast value, we have 115, we have here to be, 140, I think I'm right. Yeah, we have 165 and we have what? 136. So here we'll find our error or the deviation. We'll find an error or the deviation. All right. So error or the deviation, as we already discussed, if the, the actual value is greater than the forecast, but that results a positive deviation. But if the actual value is less than the forecast, but that results a negative deviation. So let's take note of that. So you have the actual value of what? 110, you had a forecast value of what? 115, and that should result in negative 5. So you can still copy this same word error, of course. The error won't change actually. So we have here to be negative 5. We have here to be positive 10. We have here to be positive. Is it positive 5? Yeah, we have here to be what? Negative what? 6. Okay, so once we're able to get the error or the deviation, we then square this error or the deviation. We square it. Okay, so we have a column that will square what the error. So what is the square of negative 5? We get what? Positive 25. Square of 10, we get what? 100. Square of 5, we get 25. Square of negative 6, you get what? 36. So at the end of the day, you also sum up what? These square errors. And what are we getting? Or deviation. So when you sum them up, we expect to get what? A total of what are we getting at the end of the day? So you should be able to get what 186. So you can also do so and let's see if that is correct. So once you're able to get our summation of what the square errors, therefore we say that our MSE as a mean square error should be equal to the summation of what the square values, 
right, and then divided by the summation of the square values of the errors, and then divided by what? The number involved. So what are we getting as a summation of the square values of the errors? And that was what? 186. And then divided by how many numbers were we getting as errors? And that was what? 4. So in, in all, when you divide by 4, you should be able to get 46 point what? 5. So here is, and clearly tells you that this error in terms of what the value is very large and this kind of what forecasting or this kind of determining the error, forecast error in using this particular data wouldn't be more desirable for us to rely on to make what decision, right? Because the forecast value is actually what very large and that wouldn't help to make a better prediction going forward as an organization. So let's take note of that. And this is how we calculate what the mean square error. So let's take note of that. But when it comes to the mean absolute percentage error, as always, you must calculate your error, right? You find the absolute. So here you calculate your error first, right? You find the absolute of the error. You find the percentage of the absolute of the error. And you find the mean. Very simple. So here, let's use the same data. So we have our week, we have our demand, we have our forecast value. So week one, week two, week three, and then week four. So we're having one, one, zero, that's 110. We're having here to be, was it 150? Here is 170. And lastly, it was what? 130. And let's say our forecast value was what? So our forecast value was what? 115. Here it was 140, here it was 165, and here it was what? 136. Using the same information, we want to find what the mean absolute percentage error. So as always, you find our error or you find our deviation, okay? So you find our error or what? Deviation. So here, the same thing, negative 5, right? Positive 10, 5, and then negative 6. So once you're able to find the error or deviation under this method or formula, you must go on to find the absolute values of what this error or the deviation, okay? So what is the absolute value of negative 5? You get 5, here you get what? 10, here you get 5, here you get positive 6. If it is negative, you get positive, if it is positive, and you find the absolute value of the number, is still what? Positive. So let's take note of that. So once you will get the absolute values of this word, error or the deviation, then we move on to find the percentage of this word, absolute word, values of the deviation, okay? So you create a column for percentage of these absolute values of this word, deviation. So let's take note of that. So in find the percentage of that, that is what we're going to do. You have to take into account the absolute value of the error term divided by the actual value and then multiply by what's 100. That's what we're going to do in that line. So let me bring in my calculator to show you how we do that. So this is what we're going to do in find a percentage for the week one information. So this is what we're going to do. We have our division. So we have five as our absolute value divided by what the actual value, which is for week one. So that's going to be demand 110, okay? And then multiply that by what's 100. And what are, what are we getting? We are getting what? 4 point what? So in two decimal places, 4 point what? 5, 5. So 4.55, and that's in percent. So this is what we're going to do throughout before you get that. So the next should be equal to, so the next is what? 10 divided by the actual value, which is what? 150. Okay. 150. And multiply by 100, we're getting what? 6.67, 6.67. So let's take note of that. So in two decimal, we get 6.67 in that line. And then move on to the next absolute word value. And that is what? 5 divided by the actual, which is what? 170 and then multiply that by what, 100. What we're getting, we're getting what? 2.94. So let's take note of that, 
And then lastly, we have what? Six, okay, divided by the actual value of what? 130. Then multiply by 100, we're getting what? 4.62 into decimal place. At the end of the day, you sum up these percentages and what are we getting? Let's see. So we have 4.55 plus 6.67 plus 2.94 plus 4.62. And then we're going to get what? 18.78 what, as a percentage. So you also sum up this as a summation of what? The percentage of this absolute word value and which is equal to what 18 point what seven what eight okay so once you get this then you find what the mean or the yeah the mean or the average for what this percentage therefore we say that our mean absolute percentage error should be equal to the summation of what the summation of what the percentage of the absolute values of the deviation okay and then divide by what n right and that should be equal to 18.78 divided by what 4 and what are we getting with the help of our calculator when we divide this by 4 we should be able to get what 4.695 percent so you're going to get what 4.695 percent so in terms of percentage we get what 4.69 percent so mean that we we were almost uh 90 is it 95 accurate 95 point something so let's say minus 100 so we get we were 95.305 accurate in terms of our prediction for the future as an organization and this is how we calculate what the mean absolute percentage error. So first of all, always find the error, find the absolute of the error, come and find a percentage of this absolute value by taking into account the absolute value of the error divided by the actual and then multiply by 100. I don't know that you sum all of them up and then find the mean of these percentages and you are good to go. So let's take note of that. So one last thing before we get away from or get ourselves from this uh, lesson is that of what the issue about bias. What is bias? As we have spoke a bit about it. So bias is actually a term that we use in forecast. So we realize that in forecasting, we said actually forecast error has to do with the difference between the actual value and then the forecast value. So the assumption here is that if actually I were to find the difference between the actual value and the forecast value and I'm getting what let's say zero, that would mean that everything is perfect and my prediction was exact and perfect. No, that is not actually true. Immediately you are doing that then you are being what biased. You haven't taken the analysis further to know the extent of what the error that can impact on the decision that we made as an organization. Right, and to take it further, that's where we analyze it using the mean absolute deviation, mean square error, and the mean absolute percentage error. So, if we just take the the surface as the actual minus the forecast value, then you actually take a subjective view, and then you you're going to be what a bit of what exposing or expressing what bias in the information or the data to making what decision. So, bias okay where we take into account the actual and then the forecast value, I don't know we are getting what negative and positive value. So assuming let's say we're getting here to be negative five, that's fine. Here is also let's say negative uh, positive positive ten as you see here and let's say here is positive. Here is let's say negative. Let's say negative five or something of that sort. I don't know when we add the negative and positive, they will turn out to be adding and subtracting. That can possibly equate to zero. So assuming we're getting negative 20 and positive 20. When, we, when I add these two, I'm getting zero. Does that mean that my prediction or my forecast that I made for a particular period is actually perfect? No. So when you are doing that, you are being what bias because I don't know the in bias, the negative and positive word values of errors will tend to cancel out each other and that will equate the whole issue or the whole value to what or the whole error towards zero. And that wouldn't mean that we are able to what, make a perfect prediction for the organization. So bias has to do with the term 
that tells us the extent to which the negative values of the error tend to cancel out the positive values and that will actually equate everything to zero and that wouldn't mean that your forecasting or your prediction is actually what's correct so whenever you are analyzing the accuracy of what forecasting error you must take the discussion whether by looking at it from the mean absolute deviation the mean square error and then the mean absolute percentage error you just, you, you just don't look at it from the surface by taking into account the actual value and then the forecast value when you do that you have just been what biased and that wouldn't make the analysis what actually understandable and that wouldn't provide a reliable information for us to rely on this organization to make our decision for the future and this is why you must take away when it comes to what bias so this is all about forecasting right from the beginning to where we are now so thank you so much for watching this video it was really helpful to you please do all to like the video subscribe to the channel and i'm so grateful for having you always watching our content if today is your first time on the channel do all to subscribe and then stay connected as we release more video to assist you to excel in your academy so i'll see you next session bye